And fall in my fellow scout trippers and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3. Got a nice 4v4 for you today. Tension but takes place on the map uh, Karuna 1809. I think this one was posted by Big Wolf on the NTW3 Discord. His eyes today are Master, Proudzik and Alto. Their opponents today are maybe Heisenberg, Commando and Dany. The map today is pretty good. So got some nice hills here, relatively uh, downhill for a long period of time. So if Russia just sets up on the hill here, shoots at the French forces as they come down the hill, then that'll be an easy job for them. Uh, France probably isn't that stupid. Imagine they're trying to stick to the high ground, maybe shift their armies so they have the advantage over here as well. The artillery pieces might be able to hit each other from across each crest of the hill, but you need some RD with some serious range. Well, anyway, we'll see what they do. This uh, town offers protection for both sides if they gather on either side of it. Although it's a bit risky to fight here with the end of the map, or well, the border of the map so close. Cav could be lost very quickly if they're broken, before they have a chance to reform. I've got some points in the field there. Looks to be seven points that I can see in the center. There's no points... Oh, hang on. There's a four-pointer to the north. Okay, so that's 11 points so far that I can tell. And I think maybe there's a full pointer to the south, way, way down there to the south. Southeast. So 15 points probably up for grabs. Okay, we got Austria here. Austria, is it 1805? Yep, okay. UK, Espana, Portugal. You have the Russians, of course. Way in the distance there. So UK, Portugal, we have Austria. Who else? No, oh, here we go. UK, Spain, 1808. They were right beneath me the whole time. We've got some, got some French alliance, some French forces coming in. They look to be running. Why are they running? You don't want to run, guys. Your cab isn't that good. doesn't have the best stamina. Oh, they're going after the skirmishes. That's why they're running. We might have cab coming in. When is the English cave going to veer to the left? They might have got caught on their own troops. Okay, we've got cabs are streaming into the small little village here. Oh, I've got some glitching going on there. Let's shoot a cab in the town, in the buildings. So that happens from time to time. Well, that was a quick fight there. If you want to see your own Total War type feature here on this very channel, guys, don't forget to check out those links you'll find in the video description below, which will allow you to send me through your Total Repeat. They are, of course, my email at scoutsofentertainment at gmail.com. You can post it to me directly on Discord as well. You can join my Discord server, Scouts Reconnaissance, and post it there. Or you can tag me in the replays you post on most Discord servers as well. I also do check out the NTW3 Discord from time to time as well. Now, Looks like we might be a little ways off from an engagement. France hit. He tried to take out the skirmish unit. Looks like he succeeded. And that actually hurt UK there. Those rifles probably wouldn't be that cheap. 52 skirmishes. Unit, a skirmish unit of that size. Yep, yeah, is uh, pretty, pretty pricey. That definitely hurt him. Russia is a fair way off here. The UK infantry just shooting at broken, the broken cab from before. So we might do a small cut here, guys, and come back very shortly. Looks like France is going after the house. There's the entrance to the building. We've got Hollanders guarding it. There is some English infantry nearby, but they're not positioned in the way to shoot the French forces as they go into the building. This is one doorway. They're funneling in single file. It'd be easier for the French, fo the English forces here to take them out, but they're not in the right position. Yeah, the cab engaging might help give the Hollanders the edge they need. What the? Okay, French cab coming in. English forces in the area though. They're already firing into them.
Well, the English cab unit's broken. We've got more, another English unit streaming in. Uh, England's got to be careful here. France is just the outside. Probably isn't the best idea to bayonet charge them. Once they break them, they'll shoot in. They'll focus all their fire on this tiny little area and this unit will be wiped out. He might be better off just staying where he is. And then falling back when the job is done. They're bayonet charging him. The Royal Goats. Wonder if it means the greatest soldiers of all time. They're struggling here. The morale isn't looking too hot. Ah, the goats are done. This unit's been set up in the wrong position. They need to be positioning themselves here. They might have fired and killed all the uh, remaining English troops, but I don't think this unit's come back to the battle anyway. France is um, sending in more units here to take this building. This is a good opportunity for England to set up his forces around the tree line here to shoot the incoming French forces. I mean, easy kills are easy kills. If they're going to go after that building, then he can shoot them as they enter it. I mean, once they take this building, France will knock out the windows here and begin shooting into the English forces over there. The Russian army is a long ways off. They have their cav here though. Just waiting to be used. Taken the buildings up. UK, Espana has moved up on their left flank. Austrik has also arrived. France is liking the hill that they're on. It's going to be very hard to wrestle them from that hill. Austria here might need to move into the town to seek shelter from the enemy artillery. Might be his only chance to mount an effective assault against his opponent. Standing where he is, he's exposed to the enemy artillery. Which is just bombarding his position relentlessly. France is being very aggressive. UK doesn't really have the forces to repel <laughs> that many Frenchmen. It could be why they, that's... This could be why they're retreating right now. UK Espana needs to uh, position themselves a bit better here. They're getting a bit clumped up. You've got to watch that. England artillery hammering the incoming enemy. What have we got here? Six pounder. That's a nice fire there from the six pounder. England's going to send up more troops here to the firing line. Yeah, Russia's... Uh, you think Russia would be needed here? Austria's eyeing that artillery. Do the Frenchy have a plan? They have a friendly cab in the area. See, they're walking. They're trying not to alert the enemy. We got cab coming in. But oh, they've shifted.
Well, it looks like England held off two bayonet charges. These two units have fought off four. They're broken two, they're about to break a third. Possibly a fourth. Okay, they're broken. These guys here are about to break now too. Okay, Francis is focusing his effort here on the Austrian right flank. He was going to set up his line ahead of this group of buildings here, but he's going to fall back behind them. Try and buy some time for his artillery to score more hits, I guess. Very good hit there. Now it looked to be a bit high. I looked to skim them a little bit. Whoever has the, the better accuracy will win the long game. Will win the long shootout. Now, they're trying to take this building here. It's going to be very hard to wrestle Austria out of this building. It's a bloody fortress. Nice shots there from the French. This building offers great protection and really deters the French from using the street here. We've got a lot of Austrian troops firing out of that building. Austria doesn't want to fall back too much. Austria got inside that building quick. Well, they might be able to handle that. I'm going to use them as a delaying action. Battle over here has gone dead silent. Must the occasional booms of the artillery. They're going to delimber here. Or not. I thought, they were, I thought they saw them get off their horses. We've got a lot of fast hitting cav. Okay, this there's the muscle. Has fallen to the enemy. It should be enough to deal with the French forces here. Provided these aren't crassiers. And they aren't. So that's a bonus at least. If they had the armoured plated cavalry, then Russia would need to have infantry close by to shoot them to give his own cavalry a chance. Or he'd need his own elites, which I don't think he has. Alright, France is thinking that he can steamroll Austria here. He's moving up like this. I thought we were going to see a big battle between the two sides there, but France got off a nice volley into his back. There's only so far Austria can actually retreat to. Does he actually have a plan? He's already got the high ground. They're leaving gaps in their line. And they're making way for their artillery. No, oh, sorry, their cavalry. There'd be a yes.
I wonder if the guy got thrown off his horse and went straight into the group of soldiers and it made a few dents. France is launching their own cab assault. Gotta stop falling back like that. You need to start shooting. France is moving up on him. This is this is valuable time Austria could be using to shoot at him as he's moving up towards him. He can't keep falling back. His lines is getting a bit disjointed every time he does it. Then he has to straighten up and get ready to fire again. France moves up again, he moves back. It's just, it seems to be enabling France to move up, shoot, move up, shoot, move up, shoot. In the meantime, Austrian's ranks are getting slowly thinner and thinner and thinner. This strategy seems to be really only benefiting the French, so I'm wondering why he's continuing to pursue it. Like, where is the end goal here? Why does he keep falling back like this? Our men are running, sir. We've got a large number of French troops here all bunched up together. Austria has some good opportunities here to shoot them while they're in such a huge blob. They're in such a disorganized fashion right now. Austria has the opportunity to absolutely hammer them. Keep the cave coast by in case France launches another capital of their own. But right now the units are tripping over each other and he's falling back again. Come on. Stop doing that. If you want them to stop moving up on you, you got to hit them back. You got to hit them hard. That makes them think about their advance. You're going to fall back to the town? Come on, turn around. I think there was a lot of opportunities, opportunities there for Austria to shoot France where he wasn't attacking Austria. Austria could have been attacking France. Our men are running, sir. Now, I hope he can turn things around, but so far it has not gone his way at all. And he keeps doing that. It's a bit frustrating to watch. His artillery, the English artillery, not his. Scratch that. His ally here killed half his unit. Or at least 30 men. Now, Austria knows France has squareables in this area. It's kind of interesting that he's still pursuing this charging strategy, knowing France has the capability to repel him in that Pacific location as well. He's got to learn his mistakes and not repeat them. And Austria really needs to yell at this English guy and tell him to stop shooting him. It's the second time he's done that to that unit. We're seeing a lot of chaos here in the coalition. Things started off pretty well for them. But the more Austria falls back, the more space he's enabling France to bring up reserves and actually strengthen and increase the length of their own battle line, which will make it easier to outflank the Austrian forces. They're already outnumbered, but because they were fighting in such a small gap, France wasn't able to use their numbers to spread out and increase their line. Now they can. This whole retreat strategy is really hurting the coalition. They've got to stop doing that. Now France is actually giving them ground. He's ceding ground to them. This is where the Austrians and UK, UK Spanish forces need to move forward. They've got to move forward. They've got to push them back. Probably to about here. It's a bit much, but here will probably be the spot. That would force France to bunch up and allow the, UK, allow the UK and Austria to use their numbers more effectively. Because they can spread out more than the French can. They can get more rifle shooting towards the enemy. Now it looks like UK is going to actually move forces into the center. This is where Austria needs to move around to his left. They've got to coordinate. They've got to work together. Austria looks like he's letting UK take the lead and he should be reinforcing his ally. Not just standing behind him, setting up 
trying to plug gaps, trying to increase the battle line. I think France gave Austria UK a big win there. France, it seemed like they had them on the ropes. They were pushing them back. They were retreating before them. I think it was in France's best interest to continue the attack at the time. Things were looking up for them. But they gave a breather to the coalition, so I think the coalition got a bit lucky there. Well, this unit is getting dangerously close to their enemy. They're really trying to shoot into that building there. I would have shot the infantry shooting at you right now. Alright. Russia's gonna bayonet charge him. He's a Russian grenadier, so you know you, you couldn't ask a better unit to charge him the melee. We've got Cav trying to actually slow down the advance here of the Russians. They're going to need more Cav though to do that. This is such a tight space and there's so many troops in the area. This unit could form a square before but instead it chose to try and bayonet charge a cavalry unit coming at them. We've got French reinforcements coming in. I hope the UK has the accuracy to battle at this range. Meanwhile, Rush is moving on his French opponent. France is looking a bit bunched up on their right. UK is using the buildings pretty well to move up troops. France is trying to throw them back. We're seeing a few troops fall at this joint here. Russia's trying to divide and conquer. UK's, UK's really stepping up on Russia's left. They want to try and really support their ally, but they're getting dangerously close to a superior line of French troops. Russia here probably needs to move in a little bit closer as well. Although there's not much space for him to move, to be fair. We've taken the building, sir. Okay, UK and Spain and Spain are getting tripped over on each other right now. We've got French Cav running by a line of English soldiers currently shooting in their general direction. The men are fatigued, sir. I must rest a while. Well, Russia's taking control of that building. We've, uh, we're seeing two units here being sent up solely to charge into the enemy and disorganize their line. This could be the catalyst for a, a grand bayonet charge. Or not.
Or else he's got to send up their cab along their hill. Try and take out any enemy artillery. At the same time, their, French, their, their Russian forces need to move forward and try and cut off the retreat here of these Frenchmen as they run away. UK España never actually engaged. He set up his line, but um, the attack never happened, and now he's pulling back his forces and letting Austria take charge of the battle once again. This UK Spain guy, man, you're killing more of your own team than you are the enemy. You better watch that. That was a great charge there from Austria into the backs of the enemy. He's probably going to lose this cab unit, unfortunately, but they got off a great charge. We've got isolated engagements all over the map right now. What's good for the coalition is that the further the French move up on that hill, assuming the coalition has artillery nearby, which they appear to do, it actually helps the artillery get more hits on the enemy and lowers the risk of friendly fire provided the troops don't move too high. Like they don't move too close to the French's, to the French forces on the hill here. If they stay where they are currently and shoot, artillery will be able to shoot over their heads safely and hit the enemy and not them. Meteor Dragoons. Gave them the edge. Russia's moving up his line when he's not exactly ready yet. France has a good opportunity to counter-attack here, hammer the Russian right flank, potentially start rounding a few units there, and could potentially start rolling up the Russian flank right to left. But if this line can hold, it should buy enough time for the center to overwhelm the French army here. Because this is where they have they can fight in strength. They're looking a bit weak on the right, which is of concern. But on the left, the combined force of the UK and Russia, they're looking pretty darn good. France, I've been going for a bayonet charge here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got three units lined up, getting ready to shoot. UK España has dealt with the French forces over here. And this is Cab trying to mop somebody up. Trying to take out some skirmishes. Enemy Cab, the general. Who knows? That was a confusing charge there on their part. Wasn't really sure what they were trying to accomplish. They got tripped upon their own forces, which slowed down their charge, unfortunately. and. Then the French cab seemed to catch them, and soon after the French infantry combined with the cab broke them. We've got a lot of cab coming over here.
He's charging in. I would have shot them myself. UK is content to stay where he is right now. The artillery will be doing all right for France. The Russian right flank has been reinforced. The UK is struggling to hold back the French forces over here. Russia setting up more men. Okay, Russians are advancing. Enemy General Heisenberg has fallen. Taken out by UK Spania. Seems like we've got a mass chain route. UK cab move and finish off. Uh, it's, a, it's a domino. It's a crazy domino. All the French armies are falling almost simultaneously. It's a third general now that's falling in the last three minutes. Commando 2. Over here, France is looking a bit alone. Like Austria is wearing down his opponent. He's taking control of the battle. He's bayonet charging. Well, they're not grenadiers. But it wasn't enough. The battle really could have gone either way, but um, once Russia arrived, he really took charge there. He forced France back, and UK from both both the UKs, there, Spain and Spain. Really held their own, backed up the center and the left flank. Those three guys worked pretty well together over there. Austria a little bit slow to engage, but he's coming back. His forces are going to break soon, they've lost their general. Austria wants to be careful not to get to not to get too close to those buildings. He wants to set up his firing line in a way that doesn't allow France to ambush him. Now I like what they're doing there. Seems to be coordinating now with UK Espania. We've got two units moving on these guys over here. They can't shoot in both directions. All right, now we've got weakness. Austria needs to move in from the kill. Probably move in from right to left since the, the left flank of France is looking pretty darn weak. That way, these four or five units can move up safely and begin folding here on the French either side. 
And as the line buckles, the rest of the Austrian troops move up as well to finish them off. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to finish off these guys with a bayonet charge. Now the only reason they might win this is because I think the French have lost their general. One unit broke though. Well, they broke each other. Alright, that's about it. We've got one unit that's fallen back to the house here, so we'll do some cut and come back once they're finished off. And that is it. So well done to Master there. He got 1988 kills. BJ Wolf 1428. Proud Jick 968. And Alto 1099. We had Murdy there 642. Heisenberg 352. Commando 899. And Danny 683. Will note the Master there got the most kills there on 1988. So he carried the team too. Well done, Master. Looking at the kill count there. Kill counts range from 164 volume to the Dragoons. And then we had four other infantry units get over 100 kills. The rest range from 91 all the way down to zip, one to the general. But that's not unusual there at all. And that is it. So, thank you to Master or Wolf on the NTW3 Discord. If you want to see your own Total War replay feature video on this channel, guys, once again, don't forget to check out those links you'll find in the video description below. Hope to hear from you soon. This is Mika from Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Goodbye, my fellow Scout Troopers. Catch you all in the next Total War battle.